a very good evening uh, the topic that we'll be discussing today is uh, related to self organizing maps so first of all why we uh, name it to be self organizing uh, the name is so called self organizing because in this the neurons keep on organizing its structure without any guidance without any labels that means it is completely an unsupervised form of learning that is why eh, we say that this is self organizing keeps on organizing its structure uh, then these are also called as kohanan maps and the reason behind this is that uh, uh, a professor is there that is t dot kohanan who had given this concept uh, so these are also called as kohanan maps then is what exactly uh, uh, this som is uh, this is basically a type of artificial neural network and that is used for unsupervised learning and the target application areas for uh, self organizing maps are uh, it is used in data analysis it is used in data visualization in clustering and in dimensionality reduction so these are a few application areas of self organizing maps then is what som does is it represents high dimensional data in a low dimensional space now what is high dimensional data and what is low dimensional space that is to be understood so for this uh, let's take an example uh, where we consider that we had uh, uh, we had gone to a hardware or a paint shop and we had asked for a certain paint so that we could paint our house so the shopkeeper has shown us a number of paints like paint number 1 is there that is in red color similarly paint number 2 3 4 and paint number 100 so this kind of a representation where we can see uh, the paints in full uh, page uh, form is called as high dimensional data contrary to this uh, we have a low dimensional uh, space where we have a color uh, palette and in this color palette you could see that now entire page is not needed rather a few main points or rather a few colors are needed like there are different shades of red there are different shades of purple and so on different shades are there so this is a low dimensional space and this low dimensional space is is quite good for visualization purpose that means we could easily identify which color is minor dark which color is minor uh, light and so on so for visualization purpose for data representation purpose for clustering purpose for dimensionality reduction purpose so this low dimensional space is quite good and it helps in uncovering the hidden patterns in the data Uh, that uh, that hidden patterns that are there in the complex data sets that are difficult to find so this low dimensional space is good in that plus it reduce the complex problems for easy interpretation the same example in this example this is an easy interpretation of this complex problem so that is why it is it is quite good rep form of representation high dimensional data to low dimensional space now the step by step procedure of working of som is first of all we'll have an ann artificial neural network in which we'll uh, have input layer hidden layers and output layer now this ann this is converted into uh, som now what som is som is a collection of neurons in the form of a one dimensional or two dimensional space that is in the form of a grid now in this image you see that uh, uh, we have depicted it in the form of a hexagon shape so this is merely just a representation of the artificial neural network although there is no such structure that is uh, uh, formed in the form of hexagon it is just for a visual representation so that we could identify and make structures out of it and it helps us in understanding the concept that is why hexagon are uh, taken although we could also take uh, circles we could have representation with squares but probably the best representation would be in the form of hexagon because uh, we we are to show a number of neighbors and hexagon has six different sides so neighbors can also be accommodated here so that is why the shape is taken to be hexagon uh, 
although in computational wise there is no such shape that is formed in in the form of hexagon then is from self organizing maps uh, weights are assigned to each of these neuron randomly you could see here the first hexagon is assigned a weight of 17 the second 18 third 19 20 13 14 15 16 9 and so on so weights are assigned and these are assigned randomly then is for each data point uh, similarity is to be identified similarity between what similarity between the data point and the weight now how we will calculate the similarity between data point and the weight it is through the euclidean distance that we will be calculating this similarity between data point and the weight and the neuron with the closest weight to the data point closest weight means the smallest euclidean distance so neuron with the smallest euclidean distance is known as the best matching unit so we'll have a best matching unit next step is neighbors to bmu are also identified now why we need to identify the neighbors uh, just like in a group of uh, friends all the friends are sharing the similar kind of characteristics that is why uh, they form a close bond of friends so similarly best matching unit and its neighbors are those uh, neurons that have similar kind of characteristics so neighbors to bmu are also identified then is the next step is here we update the bmu and its neighbors both are updated just like in artificial neural uh, uh, networks we keep on updating the bias as well as the weights similarly here the neuron bmu and its neighbors are also updated updation means the updation of weights only then is uh, the whole process is carried out for a certain uh, number of times that is uh, for a certain number of epochs that is uh, identification of bmu uh, identification of neighbors updation of weights so the process goes on iteratively a number of times then is what is obtained uh, weights are stable in the end grid becomes consistent and uh, what is the final output that is clusters are formed you can see the final image here a number of clusters are formed that are of blue in uh, color then of light blue in color a few are of yellow so by this way we are able to form clusters by self organizing maps so this is the content of this video if you like the video then do like comment share and subscribe and thanks for watching